Hi everybody, Mike here at the Captain Phoenix channel. Today we're going to be doing a review of uh, Destiny's video on... This is going to get a little bit Inception on us, folks. That's why I've tried to separate all of this, uh, all of this section so that uh, I'm up here in this box and Destiny's down there in his box. But it's going to be a review of Destiny reviewing a video by Mr. Reagan called Corona Hoax. I have no idea who this character Mr. Reagan is. Apparently Destiny has some experience uh, with his videos. I've watched most of Destiny's video. Uh, so it's not going to be the rawest reaction or the hottest take necessarily, but it is funny watching Destiny get triggered, and uh, I'm assuming he's going to eventually get triggered by the end of this video, so uh, let's give it a whirl. Remember Mr. Reagan? He made a video about COVID-19. Wait, what? The coronavirus hoax. <laughs> this was the guy who I was like... Okay, let's say that I go to a doctor and I say I don't want his services just because he's black. Would you consider that racism? He's like, no, not really. <laughs> Reagan. I noticed that a lot of... Wait, this guy is 220,000 so Holy shit! Left-wing blue check Twitter people, I think they're called... Oh my god, he's taking heavy inspiration from Coach Red Pill with these fucking shifting camera angles. Uh, twits. So I've noticed that a lot of twits have criticized conservatives recently for claiming that the coronavirus <clears throat> is a hoax. Let me be clear. Nobody is claiming that the coronavirus is a hoax. It's a real hey, virus. Hey, welcome back Nobody to the unofficial David Passman channel. Are Wowie. He's even like worked on like he's got like the YouTube cadence and everything now as well. <laughs> Let me be clear when I say that he has a YouTube cadence. Like he's like he's got like everything like going or whatever. Thing. Yeah, and even when I do my recorded media, I mean, I don't make a point to have a certain specific tone or cadence. He's right. This is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> the alarmism of the mainstream media. The mainstream media has caused a global panic. Flights from Europe are canceled. I disagree with Trump on this one. People claim that Trump supporters never disagree with Trump. Well, that's not true. Here's an example right they here. They always find some mundane shit to disagree with so it looks like they're not fucking sheep. So if I sold you destiny that I completely disagree with the wall, is that mundane? Do I? Have to, I'm probably going to be voting for Trump in 2020. Is that is that something where I'm just some Trump sheep? Is it mundane for me to completely disagree with the wall uh and many conservatives will disagree with me on this but i think that this is an overreaction the nba postponed their season indefinitely disney closed broadway closed everything is canceled pretty much <clears throat> nobody's flying anywhere the airline industry is crashing no pun intended oil prices are crashing the entire stock market is in a nosedive by the way throw your money in now if you have something in savings you're going to make 20 percent back probably by the end of the year maybe even in the next few months but make no mistake this is a massive overreaction a hysteria manufactured by cnn and the mainstream media the coronavirus is not the bubonic plague it's so far he's everything that mr reagan is saying is 100 percent true it's not the bubonic plague the flu it's a flu that we simply don't have a vaccination for yeah, it's a flu it's... that might be a little bit more dangerous for older people than the typical flu but it's the flu and it's nothing to get too worked up about but people are panicking now there are a lot of different statistics floating around facebook and twitter but let's have a look at a few that i think are very critical now this data here is primarily from business insider ebola 40 percent fatality rate nipa 77 fatality rate, SARS, 9.6 fatality rate, MERS, 34% fatality rate, coronavirus, 3.6 fatality rate. And this is actually wrong. This this is just from the confirmed case. Damn, 7.6 thousand thumbs up, 620 thumbs down. How do you get such an amazing... I want to do this, dude. I want the echo chamber. I don't like you guys anymore. I want, I'm going to sell you guys for some fucking hardcore fucking fans. Cases. The estimate that I saw was 1% because most cases go unreported. And I think it's actually less than that, way less. Every panic-induced virus in the past 30 years has been deadlier than the coronavirus. But do you remember everything getting shut down in previous years? I don't. Do you remember Obama being blamed for these viruses or called a racist? No. In fact, there was no real panic at all. Why? Because so the reason why Trump has been called a racist is because he's referring to it as the China virus, which is a really fucking weird way to talk about it. The China virus. Um, firstly. Secondly, ultra lethal viruses or bacterial infections aren't always the worst. Like, I think like the big prop. OK, so no. So it is 100 percent not racist to call it the China virus. It originated in China and it 
that it was the 100% of the fault of the go uh, Chinese government that this thing got completely out of hand. They they forced researchers who just had who discovered the outbreak months before it was released to the public they 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 threw them in jail and when they dissented and then they forced them to to bury that information and some of these people are still MIA so yeah no i mean this could have been this could have been so this could have been dealt with in China before it even left the country, and it would have been a, a non-story completely. There would have been a minor outbreak in, in the Wuhan territory, and if they dealt with it even close to the way any anybody's dealing with it today, yeah, rather than just completely cover it up and ignore it and let it run rampant throughout the Wuhan district. No, it's it's not racist to call it the China, the China the China virus because it originated in China, and if you're talking about a dig on the Chinese government, it is a hundred percent due. So, no, it's not racism. It, China is not a race. Problem, like with the Spanish flu, for instance, the reason why that died out is because the virus was so lethal. It started killing people. Like, before... Is it racist to call it the Spanish flu? Is Spain a... <laughs> is Spain or Spanish a, a race? No. All right, so we're going to rewind just a little bit here so we can keep track of where we were. Referring to it as the China virus, which is a really fucking weird way to talk about it. The China virus. Um, firstly. Secondly, ultra-lethal viruses or bacterial infections aren't always the worst. Like, I think, like, the big problem, like, with the Spanish flu, for instance, the reason why that died out is because the virus was so lethal, it started killing people, like, before it could be transmitted. Right? Racist. Racist. That virus originated in Spain or was first at least discovered in, in Spain. You're a racist. Right? Like th that's like th one of one of the big ways that you measure uh, the success of a virus or the threat of a virus is like how much you can transmit it from one person to another. If you get something like fucking Ebola, that's like a fucking ninety percent fatality rate or some shit. Like Ebola, I think is like crazy. Like then yeah, like um, <clears throat> fuck, it sucks a little bit, I guess. But like fuck, people die when they get it. It's not like they're transmitting it to every single fucking person, you know. Um, yeah, so he's relating it to the common in it, to the common flu, right? And the common flu already spreads like motherfucking wildfire, right? You're 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 comparing something that spreads like motherfucking wildfire to something that spreads like motherfucking wildfire. I realize that statistical virality may be significantly more from one to the other. The highest estimate I've seen is a virality of 10 times the common influenza outbreaks, right? And the thing is that when you're talking about something that is just already ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously virulent, well, then what's the difference between that and one more ridiculous in terms of virulency, right? If it if it's something like, like the common flu, which infects virtually, which infects millions of Americans each year, right? Which in fact probably infects virtually everyone over the course of a year or two in the United States because in many cases it goes completely undetected and completely unreported. So like an, a proper analogy to what I'm talking about is that if you hit the Powerball jackpot, right? And you take home $80 million after taxes, what's the difference in how your lifestyle is going to be affected by that, that jackpot winnings versus... $800 million, so 10 times that, if you're anything other than repugnantly negligent with your finances. So, someone who is, so in both cases, what you're supposed, what you should do if you're for most lottery ticket winners in those circumstances is, yeah, if you want to move into slightly more comfortable home, to a slightly more comfortable living situation, you know, from 3-2 raised ranch, 12, 12 to 1,400 square feet, down to North Carolina so you can get away from the from the bitter winters of the Northeast, right, to a place that's like 4-2, 2,000 square foot colonial on half an acre or an acre rather than a quarter to a third of an acre. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do, and then maybe you update your your vehicles. We're not talking about going from a Subaru to Ferrari. We're talking about going to from a Civic to an Accord. We're talking about going from 110,000 miles to 25,000 miles. This is what you should be doing, and then all of the rest of that money, well, virtually all of the rest of that money should be going towards towards your investments. Obviously, the first thing you should be doing with that sort of winnings is paying off debt, right? But as soon as all of that debt is gone, and for most people, it's going to eat up almost none of that because nobody's ten, nobody who's playing the lottery is $10 million in debt, right? And then, yeah, okay, maybe to your immediate family. Again, we're talking about somebody who isn't totally negligent with their finances. 
Maybe you give your immediate family a million bucks a piece. It's basically shut up money, but we're, but nobody wants to call it that, right? Like I have a brother, he has a wife, I have a mother, I have a father. That's $3 million gone, right? And, you know, maybe the, the house I buy is, maybe the capital expenditures that I have total a million dollars. It's not going to equate to that, not going to equate to anything close to that. So let's say for argument's sake, that $80 million becomes $70 million. 8%, which is a really, really low risk investment uh, with any investment company, right? Go to Edward Jones, get a diversified portfolio. You're going to earn over the over the over your lifetime at least 8%. And that's a fairly, that's a very conservative portfolio, even if you're diversified, right? 8% of $70 million is fucking $5.6 million, right? If you're living, again, anything other than wildly irresponsibly with your money, you're, you're set for life. You're set for life. $800 million is exact. You're set for life as well, right? Perhaps you can afford to be, live more extravagantly. You still shouldn't. You still should. Saving is how wealth is built. That's how everyone is benefited. If you want your legacy, your children, your grandchildren to, to not have to worry about money, you invest that money. So for you, your lifestyle is not going to be significantly affected by the difference between $80 million and $800 million. You are going to be, you can retire right then and there and live comfortably for the very, 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 very comfortably for the rest of your life to a point where once a year, if you want to take a three-week trip to Tahiti on a first-class ticket, done. Done. All expenses paid. Five-star resort, done. Paid. $30,000 trip, done. Paid. You make $5.6 million a year on your investments. You can afford to take a million a year off the top. You're good, Right. So the idea is that when something is already completely off the charts, if you're comparing it to something that's completely off the charts as well, then the scale really doesn't matter. It's still completely off the charts. And the, I mean, another perfect analogy if we're talking about the lottery is the monkey's typing a thought experiment. Your odds of winning the Powerball are basically zero, but they're still mathematically infinitely more, you're still infinitely more likely to win the Powerball jackpot than you are to see the monkey's typing thought experiment ever succeed. But it doesn't fucking matter. If you're a betting man, you always, 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 always bet against the guy who bought the lottery ticket right? It doesn't take away from the fact that the lottery is nothing more than a tax on stupid. And you should 100% of the time always bet that the guy who bought the lottery ticket is going to lose. Just like you would bet that in the monkey's typing um, thought experiment, you're going to bet that it's not going to succeed. So how your betting strategy it changes from one to the other is zero. Therefore, since and that's that's what I'm talking about. This is the, this is the analogy I'm using. The response to the to the common flu should basically be, mimic the response that we're getting from coronavirus. Now, if you're going to argue that the way we respond to the common flu is flawed, fine, 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 fine. But one is, I, I mean, we're talking about mortality rates that are virtually identical. We're talking about <laughs> virility that is still already completely off the charts with the flu if you have the flu if you have even the common cold don't go visit grandpa in the nursing home if you're grandpa and you're 80 and you're at risk because you're 80 and you're going to the fucking airport and you're taking if you're doing the commute from from Danbury station into Norwalk and then Norwalk station into Grand Central station and if, and then from Grand or sorry not even Grand Central if you're going from uh, to 125th and then taking the I think it's the Q80 yeah the Q80 bus or it's the M80 I forget which over to LaGuardia and then you're going to take a plane get on a plane and, and go to LAX and get off LAX LAX and you know travel around Lo Los Angeles do like the Koreans do and wear a mask. The flu already has an unbelievably virulent, is, is already unbelievably virulent. That's his point. Because the media didn't tell you to panic. They didn't have a motivation to attack the president at that time. But if the economy crashes and the quality of life in America drops, they think that maybe they've got a shot at winning the presidential hey, election buddy. in November. Happy 13 they months. Imagine. Shelby. Oh, thank you, Shelby. Hi. Imagine thinking that, like, media companies would convince fucking countries to close down. Imagine... Th 
That's how media works. You me, media by its very nature influences people. The whole point, the whole point of having a media outlet is to inf- is basically to influence people. And in in the case of that's 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 how you you make a living. You sell you sell advertising space, right? So if nothing else, your channel should influence viewers to watch your channel, right? If nothing else, so obviously. Obviously, a media outlet that has an obvious bias, right, even if it isn't their intention when they expound a message, right, that they want lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people to hear, of course, those lots and lots and lots of people are going to be influenced by everything they hear, including the stuff that comes from the mainstream media, which is all angled toward one, it's all tilted one way. Thinking that like, um, imagine thinking that like all these industries are shutting down because of fucking CNN. This is your brain. Imagine thinking that people who watch CNN don't absorb anything from CNN. Imagine that the that Democrats who watch CNN don't nod their heads in agreement when Don Lemon says something. Uh, imagine, imagine that uh, somebody watching the news, imagine CNN's objective when when pumping out the news is to not get people to absorb the news. Jesus, dude. Brain on like anti-SJWism. This is so fucking stupid. Don't, but that's their plan. And consider this, the H1N1 virus, commonly called the swine flu, had an estimated fatality rate of 11% in 2009, Hi, according are to you going this to web visit and Maybe. World. Maybe. But in 2013, Wowie. after better information was available... The- okay, the problem is that the mortality rate, okay? There's there's different numbers to take into account. One, you have like, the, you've got like the mortality rate of like any given, um, of any given virus, but you also, or any given disease, I guess I should say. Um, but you also have the fact that a certain percentage of these people need to be hospitalized. Like I think- What percentage? With influenza, it's like five to ten percent of people need to be hospitalized when they contract some given disease, right? The problem is that if this disease, if this virus is on average infecting like 2.3 or 2.6 people per infection or whatever, um, if that's happening, what happens is is hospitals get overwhelmed, and now that ten. Or- it doesn't matter if 330 million people get the disease. If the disease is so so minor. If the infection is so minor that nobody has to go to the hospital, 330 million people test positive for something and nobody has to be hospitalized because it's the common cold. Get over it. Right. That's you've completely missed the point. This is what he's saying that like like if you're 35 and you're single and you don't have kids and, you know, you're in great shape and you're and you diet and you exercise. Take a few days off. Take a few days off. Maybe take a week off. You're good. You're good. You'll you'll be fine and nobody will get it because you took the week off. You don't need to go to the hospital. There are 5% of people that need to be hospitalized. Now they are no longer able to be hospitalized. That massively drives up the the mortality rate. Like that's, that's an issue. The issue is overwhelming hospitals. That's why like, it doesn't matter if, if, if every single person on the planet eventually got infected with Corona, that's fine. It's not a big deal. The deal is how quickly are they getting infected? This is what people talk about when they... Even if they're getting infected instantaneously, the deal is how many of them need to go to the hospital. And the, if the answer is virtually none of them. I mean, about when they talk about smoothing the curve, if everybody gets infected in the next month, that's a really big problem because there's just not enough room in hospitals for this many people. Oh, everybody God, we got an ad like coming. Two years, I'll have like, to edit this out. And you have way more time to treat people, to have people come in and out and in and out. That's that's way more manageable for any healthcare system. Um, you, you just don't have like a, a hospital system built up to deal with millions of sick people simultaneously. It just doesn't make sense to have that on hand. The situation was reassessed. And now they say that the virus had about a 0.02 fatality rate. Who knows what the coronavirus fatality Mr. rate Reagan actually is. We literally the have... Mr. Reagan nurse, that this is all CNN's fault. Well, that's the problem. Who knows what the fatality rate is? We don't know. And like... Ha- but the highest estimate is like 4%. And the thing is, like, like he's going to bring up, and like everybody already knows, the number of people who are going to get it, who have it now, and who have had it, is almost certainly going to completely dwarf the number of people who test positive. 
That's why that data point is totally irrelevant to this conversation. Because when you get the 0.2% for the common flu, that's an estimate from the CDC based on the number of people they think got it, not the number of people who necessarily tested positive for it. Half the world's population is expected to get infected with it. <laughs> or at least I think half the U.S. population, I think, was the last I heard. No way of knowing. You may... No, that was, that's been widely discredited. The worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is something like 25%. And that was, that, that estimate has been widely discredited. And that assumes a whole lot of measures don't get put in place that have already been in place. They have the coronavirus right now and not know it because so many people express zero symptoms. Yep. Here's another valuable tweet. This one is from Charlie Kirk, and this is a great tweet. Okay, so this is the... Okay, so... Usually a bad time. This is me being consistent. Charlie Kirk's tweets, Charlie Kirk's Twitter feed, usually a bad source. Deaths every single day worldwide. The flu causes 1,027 deaths worldwide every single day. Pneumonia, 2,216 deaths every single day. Tuberculosis, 3,000 deaths every single day. Coronavirus, 56. Coronavirus is causing an average of 56 deaths every single day. So I, I think that should put this all in perspective. And as I said, <laughs> current estimates suggest that 1% of people who get this virus die. You'll hear 3.6%, but it's the percent of reported cases. And many cases of coronavirus are going unreported. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't produced a video in about a week. Well, that's because I have been in bed sick. More on that in a moment. First, I have to sell you something. If people become oh, trapped God, in their homes because of the recent pandemic, Another going part dangerous, to, you have, have to edit this out. Is the idea. To be honest, I think it was just a really bad cold. I didn't have a fever or anything like that. So now how do I not know if I had corona or not? Well, I'll tell you what. I didn't feel like I should get tested because people under 55, they're not dying from coronavirus. And why go infect a bunch of old people in the hospital in order to get tested? What's the point of that? Good point. My point is just this. If I didn't get tested, how many other people who are really, really sick just aren't going into the hospital, just aren't getting tested? I imagine quite a lot. Again, this virus is not that dangerous. The mainstream media has just lamestream media up so much <laughs> that everybody's gone into a crazy panic. Now, in defense of the mainstream media, this overreaction started. Oh, man, you see, guys, that's why I love watching Destiny, man. Yeah, he gets the memes. In China, we saw some pretty crazy scenes of Chinese people being rounded up by men in biohazard suits. China blew this thing way out of proportion from the very beginning. Of course, then the left-wing media in the United States went completely crazy. And they actually f have fallen back on their favorite accusation against conservatives, that somehow this virus is exposing that we conservatives are, yep, you guessed it, racist. <laughs> of course, of course, we're racist because of the coronavirus. This accusation has taken two forms. The first is the accusation that calling it the Wuhan virus is racist because nobody ever classified a virus by the geographic region of origin before. No, no, that's never happened ever in the history of the world ever. No, no, this is something that we conservatives invented just for this Wuhan coronavirus because we hate Chinese people so much. I mean, even among actual racists, the Chinese seem to be kind of exempt. For whatever reason, racists seem to make an exemption for Asians. Maybe they got a thing for Asian chicks. I don't know. But even if conservatives were racist Weird. against Asians, which is insane, but even if that were true, claiming that calling the coronavirus the Wuhan virus, claiming that that is racist, is completely absurd. In fact, it's so absurd that an organization called the Media Research Center made a brilliant video exposing just how absurd it is. You're starting to hear the Republicans, especially Trump Co., calling it the Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. They're looking for someone to blame. The Wuhan coronavirus, Wuhan coronavirus. At least six people have died from the Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus, oh my God. The, coronavirus. the Wuhan coronavirus, the outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus, Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus. Tying coronavirus to China and Chinese people isn't just a racist dog whistle. It's a whole racist orchestra. Foreign virus setting up travel bans for the outside. Okay, so this is really obnoxious. Um, <laughs> Mr. Reagan, like, you don't need to show the whole thing. Show a snippet, link to it in your description. 
for the purposes of this video, we're editing it out and we're moving to the end of it. All right, we're back. It's going to come across to a lot of Americans as smacking of a xenophobia, uh, right. to use that kind of term. Hilarious. Obnoxious. Don't put the whole video in your in your video. Jesus. The second approach to the conservatives are racist claim has been the idea that because we're not going to Chinese restaurants as much these days, we must be racist. This is a claim that was made first by AOC and reiterated by Ayanna. I don't think China coronavirus outbreak is the same as calling it the China virus, but okay. Presley. It is. The virus is causing the outbreak. So if you're calling it the X virus, then you should then it makes perfect sense to call it the X virus outbreak. There's a lot of restaurants that are feeling the pain of racism, uh, where people are literally not patroning Chinese restaurants. <sighs> Um, they're not patroning Asian restaurants because oh of God. just straight up racism around the coronavirus. How many restaurants are getting patronized right now? Actually, I'm in Cookville, Tennessee, where there aren't any restrictions on, on whether or not re uh, restaurants can stay open. And they're struggling to stay open because they're fucking dead. That's Chili's. That's, uh, I, I can go through a lot of them. Chili's is dead. Um, uh, uh, Logan's is dead. Logan, Logan Roadhouse. Texas, Texas Roadhouse is dead. Uh, uh, te uh, Longhorn Steakhouse is dead. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is dead. Um, even the local eateries are completely dead. No, there's all of these restaurants are hurting. So I would totally expect Chinese restaurants to be hurting as well. You know, since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak, we have seen not only the spreading of the virus. Speaking of maybe races, I don't know. What a weird fucking thing. She's trying to say that people aren't patronizing Chinese restaurants, but she never learned to speak English. What the fuck? That okay, we got to pause this video and zoom in on this because there's some tiny, tiny text. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about this because I have to go to full screen for you guys to see it. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it if I go full screen. Okay. So this is something that Mr. Reagan put in the video for that, that he made. I think he's added it on to AOC's video. She's trying to say that people aren't patronizing Chinese restaurants, but she never learned to speak English? What the fuck? Is this... I don't even know what that's about. Obviously, AOC, AOC speaks English. What? I mean, there's a lot of criticism, there's a lot of legitimate criticism to be made for, of AOC, but clearly she speaks English, right? Oh my god, the comments in Destiny's feed. Slay queen. My queen. She's my queen. I wonder... Queen! I wonder if they're talking about AOC because, <laughs> dude, I hope they're not because, dude, Steven, you, you, Steven, have actually criticized uh, AOC for being fucking completely economically Ill illiterate at the very least, if not a complete idiot. That's kind of weird, but okay. As of just straight up racism around the coronavirus. You know, since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak, we have seen not only the spreading of the virus, but also a rapid spreading of racism and xenophobia. The highest levels, in fact, of the Republican Party fanning irresponsibly uh, these flames. Um, one colleague tweeted that everything you need to know about the Chinese coronavirus, unquote. This painful rhetoric has... Wait, Destiny, explain it. What are you talking about? Oh, fuck. Wait, can you not read it? Hold on. I'm sorry. He put it, I'm sorry, maybe it's hard to see. He put a caption on this video right down here. There's a caption. It's hard to see. But he wrote a caption next to AOC saying, she's trying to say that people aren't quote unquote patronizing Chinese restaurants, but she never learned to speak English. He, he wrote this caption in here, like hard to see text. I, I don't know if that's just, it's kind, just because this guy doesn't have the best track record with this shit. It's kind of a weird thing to write on a, on a video. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of, Yeah. You want to use that R word, Destiny? Because it doesn't sound racist, but it does sound dumb. Restaurants across Boston. Chinatown have seen up to an 80% drop in business. I mean, this just doesn't make any sense at all. Even leftists are I like, I haven't wait. seen the assumed infection rate for U.S. population of 50 substantiated anywhere. Keeping in mind the infection rate for Hubei region with these restrictions on people's rights just to save a bunch of old people is insane. Oh, good luck. Oh, jeez. Okay. 
Wait, what? Let me tell you, if some Chinese guy got off the plane from Wuhan this morning and went to shake AOC or Ayana's hand, those girls would be running and hiding under their congressional office desks. The right. virus originated in China. Of course, people don't want to be around Chinese people. Is it rational? Whoa, um, what? No, I don't think it is. But is it racist? No, of course. It's by definition. That's by definition racism. That is literally. No, it's not by definition racism. It is almost, it is very likely founded in racism. Um, it's, it's discrimination by race, but it is not necessarily racism. Racism is the notion that you can make an evaluative judgment, an evaluative conclusion based entirely on race. What does that mean? That one race is a priori, a prioristically better than another race. So that's not what this is actually establishing. This is like the scenario where you have the Korean shop owner who, uh, who every time a black guy wearing a black do rag walks in with baggy jeans, they get, they get robbed, right? And if every single fucking time that's the case, then every single time a black guy with baggy jeans and a do-rag comes into their, into the Korean shop owner's shop, they're going to treat them a little bit differently. Now, how, uh, to what extent they treat them differently, maybe they just, you know, make sure to have one of the uh, stock boys stocking shelves next to them just to keep an eye on them, right? This is a case of uh, what's called discrimination two, according to Thomas Sowell's when he wrote uh, Discrimination and Disparities, which I actually did a review of in my other channel. I'll link to that video in this video's description. Um, but the idea is when you don't have enough information, but you do have this characteristic, which is def which you can use to, with any degree of accuracy, predict an outcome, but the only bit of information you have is this, then yes, it is discrimination based on race. Is it necessarily founded on the a aprioristic belief that one race is better than the other? No. So it, it probably is racism, but in this case, it, it does. It is not built into the definition of what's happening. Like there are Chinese Americans that have never set foot in China in their entire fucking lives. For you to say, right. But there's no way to differentiate between the two. I don't want to be around you because you're. Chi well, I mean, I take that back. There might be some way to differentiate between the two. But if, if that's if there is no way to differentiate between the two other than the fact that they are Chinese, then what are you going to do? Chinese? Not to mention the fact that 90% of these people that you identify as Chinese are probably fucking Korean or Japanese or some shit. Like, for you to be like, I don't want... True, but white people have a very tough time differentiating between the two. Just like uh, Africans, I'm not going to say black Americans, I'm saying Africans, like people from Nigeria have a tough time differentiating between, you know, Italians, Englishmen, Swedes, um, Eastern Europeans, Frenchmen, Spaniards, etc. Want to be around that? That's literally racism. Like... We can talk about whether or not it's justified to be, I guess, like prejudiced in this way or whatever. Like, it is racism. Like, Jesus. Oh, it is prejudice, but it's not necessarily racism. Of course it's not, you lunatics. It's what we call self-preservation. No, it is. No, no. Mr. Reagan, you got to get this right. This is actually discrimination based on race. It's not just self-preservation. It's discrimination based on race. But it isn't necessarily discrimination based on racism. It's a tough distinction to make, I get, but... You know, and I and in many cases you're probably splitting a hair. But if you were to talk to these, and I'll pro, I will definitely, I'll, I'll grant the fact that if you actually talk to these people one on one, they probably are making this decision on an a prioristic value judgment based exclusively on race. So, you know, it's discrimination based on race. Definitely, you got you have to call it what it is, Mr. Reagan. That's what it is. It isn't necessarily founded in racism. If some new form of leprosy originated from blonde people, we'd all be avoiding blonde people. That doesn't Notice make... how he says blonde people. Now, I love it. This is why I love analogies. People hate when I use analogies. I love analogies because I think analogies are a gateway into a person's thought process. Notice how he compares a virus that originates from blonde people as like how like Chinese people must have just given birth to the virus. This is why you don't call it the Chinese virus. Because you call it the Chinese virus because it is Chinese in origin. It comes from China. Things that are from China are Chinese. Chinese products are, ch are made in China. You don't call them China products. You call them Chinese products. That's the adjective form of China, number one. And number two, like, if there's no way to differentiate between people who have been to China and have been exposed to this virus and Chinese people, then that's not necessarily racism. It is all, it is almost certainly ignorance. It is almost certainly ignorance. It is definitely discrimination based on race. It may not necessarily be racism. 
though. I know, I know you're going to say, I'm grasping at straws. Okay, I'm probably grasping at straws, but it's not necessarily racism. Because people will unironically go, oh, Chinese person, it came from Chinese people. Well, it probably originated in some section of China uh, from, I don't know what the current theory is or what it is. But that's way different than thinking like, it comes from Chinese people. This is why you don't use terms like that anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It doesn't come from Chinese people. It comes from China. It came from China, let's say. It originated in China. But the adjective form of China is Chinese. So like, how else do you build that sentence? It's because of people like this. Um, right? Like, if you're being more specific, it would be Wuhanese. But if you're trying to make a criticism on the Chinese government, it is the Chinese government. Adjective form, China government. Jesus Christ, dude. I have to leave for my thing, though. Fuck, I'm sorry. I love you guys. It's about a 30-minute drive now, so. Um, okay, I love you guys. It's been fun. Um, I've heard people saying that it came from, like, the markets, but I don't know if that's true or not, or if... Um, or if that's just a meme or what? I've heard it, they've they've found the they've found the again. This is just rumor, but I've heard that they've found uh, positive tests for it in bats, and you know, with bats, it's really hard to control the spread of a disease because you know they can latch on to you because they can fly from anywhere. So, like, what do you do? personal story about the racism oh many some lady who works in this building was walking towards me in the cafeteria as i'm walking back to my desk looking at me then turned around i'm not even covering your stuff when she my hand went. good meme from your debate with this guy uh yeah no i i mean i agree with you for the most part you're you're right about everything that you said i don't think it's a, a great argument <laughs> god damn it that dude hey Get that guy on Twitter. I will debate that guy about this shit. If, they, if he has a contact or whatever, like fucking reach out, clip this or whatever, I would love to talk to him about this. Um, 100 billion percent. And if you guys have some way of de contacting Destiny, I'd love to debate him about this because to be honest, I think I'd be a better debater than Mr. Reagan who has no ability to decipher nuance. This morning, a White House official referred to coronavirus as the Kung Flu. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, dude, Steve, even you have to, even you're laughing at that. I mean, come on, come on. All right, folks, that was fun. It's been Mike from the Captain Phoenix channel. See you in the next one.